I was at the doctor's office last week. I was big flat screen TV broadcast health bulletins. They're basically infomercials for ways to seduce you into being worried about your health. So when they actually show you the advertisement for the pill, you'll ask your doctor who's right on your side of the door in the waiting room. But this little five minute piece or whatever on stress. Ways to reduce your stress. I had some good stuff. I have breathing exercises and some little isometric and other exercises to relieve stress. A uh, little bit about exercise. Very little about diet. Nothing about love. Nothing about friendships. Nothing about going bowling with the girls. Nothing about playing ball with your daughter. Nothing about Making love to your wife. I noticed this. Before I went in and got treated like meat. So, about this courtship business. We made it through the first panic. And it wasn't pretty. But I learned some valuable stuff, and one of the things that I learned that I've been feeling guilty about and didn't know how to balance as a feminist, as a uh, equal rights kind of a gal, as a pretty androgynous person, it seems to me like I have to let go of my ego. I don't mean get buried alive in somebody else's stuff and become somebody else's victim. But it seems to me love is not about how she makes me feel. Love is an action. Love is what I give her. Well, therein lies the problem. Like I said, we're very different people. And I have a pretty clear idea on what her needs are. And yes, I'm talking sexually too. But what her needs are to feel safe, to be able to trust. I think I have a pretty clear glimpse of what's going on. My friend Kate, she says um, that what I'm asking is how to love intelligently. Oh, yeah. See, that we don't have role models for this stuff. Uh, the crap you see on TV, the crap they teach you in church, love is sacrifice, love is suffering, love is pain, uh, love is obsession, uh, love is arousal, to a point. But you can't just sit around with a heart on all day. You won't get any work done. So it occurred to me, I don't have a clue what love is and how to accomplish it. I mean, how to work it. Nobody taught me. And the role models I had around me were pretty sick, messed up people. And I don't want to do any of that. Not to her. I think she's seen enough of that already. So I said, Kate, you've been doing it for 30 years. And I trust your opinion. And I know you don't volunteer your opinion, but have at it, girl. Tell me. And she said, It is about being outside yourself. It's not about keeping score. It's not about, look at all the stuff I did for you and how little you did for me. Because we ne never remember all the good stuff other people do for us. We only remember what good stuff we did for them. <coughs> you know, ego. <clears throat> she said I can talk to her about it any time. I have an instructor that I trust implicitly. A woman I've known for mm, 30 years. Strong woman partnered with a strong woman. 
beautiful, loving, compassionate, community-changing women. Classic women. I want to love like that. So I've got a channel. Well, today there was, we had a little Skype call. Not me and Kate, me and Em. You know, if I was in Great Britain right now, right this second, and I was standing outside M's door. I'm not physically strong enough to love her. I've got rotten teeth. I don't have an income. I've been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. What the hell good am I to her? The last thing she needs is another burden. So... My ex found a doctor, I'll try to put the link in the under bar. My ex found a doctor who was confined to a wheelchair because of multiple sclerosis, who said, this is bullshit. There's got to be something I can do for neurological repair. And she started, no research had been done on this. She started researching diet and brain chemistry and brain structure. The myelin, the fatty sheet that goes over the uh, the neurons, that's what gets destroyed. The very biochemical structure of the brain. And well, you need a lot of Bs and B vitamins. You need a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. I mean, I pretty much knew this. There's other things like sulfur and some other things. <coughs> well, she started goofing around with this. If she's not in a wheelchair now. She's on a bicycle. So I've got to leave it on her website. My ex sent me a um, talk she give on TED Talks. It's going to mean a lot of vegetables, and I only get $100 a month food stamps, but spring will be coming. I can grow some stuff. i got to get out of here. It's another video. And I've got enough stuff around here, around the house right now. i got to wait for my food stamps for next month before I really stock up on fresh vegetables. But I've got fresh fruit. I've got frozen and canned vegetables. I know they're not as nutritionally beneficial, but it's better than nothing. I don't have much meat left. I have cheese. I have tuna. Um, and tuna, you know. So we start working on the diet. Once the tobacco runs out, we start working on this. That's a long plane flight to the UK. I'm going to need lung capacity. I'm going to need lung capacity anyway. <laughs> then there's upper body strength. I don't want to work too much on my legs because the MS symptoms are a little worrisome. Let me get my diet together and see if the symptoms start to reduce. And then I'll start working on uh, strength in my legs. But upper body strength. I've already started working on my arms. And my back partly so I can move out of here and partly so I can hold them so I've got a long list of things I have to do and then I ran into somebody on Facebook that I knew from uh, Los Angeles 30 something years ago back when we were all being egalitarian androgynous dykes trying not to be too feminine or too masculine. Well, then, of course, the butch femme thing hit. And I remember some of those women back then admiring the old butches from the 50s and the 60s. And I seduced one of those women. I was 20 and she was 40 and she was all. And I, I was determined I was going to make love to this woman. A 20-year-old didn't know nothing went by in ears. Changed my life. <laughs> I'm not kidding. 
So I found out that one of these women I used to run with in a pack in a herd back in Los Angeles back in the day, she's operating a little uh, Facebook page for butches. So I'm going to brush up on my butch lessons. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to stop being rogy. And I know a lot of butches that wear, um, this is silk, girl, that wear silk flowered bathrobes because what I do behind closed doors is my business. But I need to be firm and strong and dependable. I also just recently joined the listserv for some feminist women in the media. And there's been a couple of job postings. And a comment I left on Ms. Magazine's blog is going to get published in next month's issue. And I've got the contact name for the woman in the digital media division of Ms. Magazine now because she asked my permission to publish it. I'm a good writer. I'm a pretty good radio producer. And I'm getting better with these here videos, considering I don't have any software or, you know, or any room. Where would I put a green screen, right? So that's the plan. Because courtship is not seduction. Courtship is about laying the foundation for a bond. economic, emotional bond, as in we're going to live together, we're going to share our lives together. I figure it'll take me about two years to get the teeth straightened out, get my physical strength up to par. I've got a lead on a place that'd be a lot cheaper to live. It's a lot more like where I want to live. Um, where the animals will be healthy and safe and happy. I figure in about two years, I may be able to step off of a plane in England. Probably for a visit, probably not permanently. Because I've got these old animals I've got to figure out what to do with. and. You know, I've been looking around this trailer at this stuff that I held on to so carefully so that I would have the tools I needed to stay alive and the equipment I needed to not go out of my mind and the beautiful things to nurture me. And I looked around here today and aside from a few things and the critters, I could let it all go. So I'm devoting myself to the act of loving her. And the best way to love her is to love myself, nurture myself, care for myself, be a good friend to myself. So that when I step off that plane, I'll be strong and I'll be healthy. And I'll have a smile. And I can kiss her. And I can take care of my own financial needs and not be a burden. And I can treat her like a lady. So that's the plan, and I've said it publicly, so now I'm stuck with it. 